So HDR, also known as high dynamic range, is kind of the new frontier for uh, video and photography. For the last while, it's been ISO and high pixel count and um, you know video resolution. Um, but it's cool to see that kind of the next frontier for video and for photography is high dynamic range. And uh, if you're on this video because you have heard that but maybe don't know totally what's about, I have a really simplistic um, example of high dynamic range, which should hopefully help you understand it. It's something I've been kind of researching because I've been interested in it. So we're actually going to look at this picture here. Uh, my name is Aaron. I actually work at a sign company called Wild Signs, and uh, we recently did these uh, backlit letters. Uh, they're LED letters for the Amazon apartment building, uh, and I wanted to get some images of them that I could use for a blog post that I'm going to do. So I went out last night uh, in the pitch black uh, to take some photos. And what you're looking at is actually kind of a it's a kind of a weird high dynamic range picture because I actually had to use two pictures to make this picture. Let's do a little bit of scientific stuff really quick. I'm gonna move over here to Illustrator. So basically a camera has uh, an exposure range and even your eye has an exposure range. It's just a lot higher than a camera. So uh, as you can see, the exposure range of a camera is depicted here by this gray box. And you can see obviously that there's light outside above and light below. Uh, and you can think of exposure as your camera can only sense so much light and uh, when the when when if it was like a bucket if the bucket was full the lights gonna spill out and that spillage is either gonna um, be overexposed which would be completely white or it's gonna be underexposed uh, which will be completely black so one more time I'll explain that basically if you take a photo uh, and there's too much light it's going to take those colors and just make them completely white. They won't have any detail. So that's, I mean, the, the whole point of photography and video is to have detail. So it's it's the complete opposite of that. Uh, and it's the same The same goes if there's not enough light. Uh, your, your camera, instead of making that color in detail, it's going to just make it completely black. So we're kind of stuck within the exposure range of our camera. So let's go back and look at the picture that I took, actually two pictures. So what I wanted was to be able to see the building building which is uh, was really dark because there's not a lot of lights on it um, but then the Amazon lettering is very very bright so I'll show you the first picture that I took look like that as you can see I had to open my shutter speed a lot to um, allow for enough light to come in that I could see the building and see detail on the building but what that did was it overexposed the Amazon letters and they turned white with no detail and I didn't want that I want to be able to see the Amazon letters as well so this is what it looked like when I exposed for the Amazon letters uh, to be in proper exposure you can see now that those are the only things you can see because everything else was so dark that it was underexposed uh, there wasn't enough light, so my camera turned it completely black. And this is a horrible picture, too. Both of these pictures are terrible. So what I did, um, because I wanted this to be a nice picture, was I actually took two the two pictures uh, and I removed the lettering from that one picture that was exposed for the Amazon letters, and I placed it on the image that was exposed for the building. And in essence, what I did was I kind of really extended the uh, dynamic range of my camera in the sense that technically this the Amazon lettering is too bright, like it shouldn't have um, been able to be exposed uh, with the building, the exposure, the way it is. But they're building cameras that uh, can do this now. So I'm going to go back over here and show you an example. Uh, this is kind of what I did. If I take my exposure range here of my camera and I pull this all the way up, uh, this was when I exposed for the Amazon lettering. So I exposed it to get all the really bright lights of the Amazon lettering, but what that did was it left all of the dark areas, the darker building areas, underexposed so they turned completely black. I'll show you again. That looked like this. Not a good picture. So then I took a second picture where I exposed for the darkness of the building and so you could see the detail in there but it overexposed the Amazon lettering 
and so they turned white and that's not what i wanted because i wanted to be able to you know to see how it looks with the amazon actually how it looks because it doesn't look white with my eye um, so let's go back in the center here you know this is kind of what you would say would be a standard camera um, but what they're starting to do is have cameras that have really large exposure ranges so it really opens up the ability to be able to capture brighter lights and uh, darker shadows and darker scenery together at the same time and what i think is really fascinating is what they're doing is more replicating what you see with your eye because your eye sees a really large exposure range and i don't know the scientific reason behind that but it does um, and so normally when you're filming something dark uh, they brighten that up so you can see that stuff and then the uh, the brighter parts of the scene like a headlight or something don't look right they just don't look how your eyes would see them and the same vice versa if they were exposing for something that was really bright uh, the dark stuff would be even darker maybe where you can't even tell what's happening so what they're doing by creating cameras with high dynamic range is basically more replicating what your eyes see so video and pictures that are going to be coming out um, in HDR are going to just look a lot more realistic and a lot closer to what your eye would naturally see so I just think that's really cool they're already kind of doing that with pictures um, there, there's an HDR mode on the iPhone and you can get uh, HDR presets for Lightroom that do things to the shadows and the highlights to try to make them uh, high dynamic range and uh, a lot of times for the iPhone, what it's doing is taking multiple photos at different exposures and it's mixing those to create one picture. So pretty soon, though, we'll be able to do that with cameras uh, and, and uh, for photography and for video where we don't have to mix multiple pictures. And there already are cameras with higher dynamic ranges than we've ever seen. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to keep going that realm uh, and increasing that so that our film and our pictures look more like what our eye sees, which I think will be really cool. I'm going to post some links to uh, some blogs and some videos that uh, kind of go even deeper into this whole high dynamic range thing. If you're interested in learning more, check them out.